Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 5.4, Analyzing Graphs of Polynomial Functions. We're going to get things started right away with graphing this polynomial function, but we're going to go about it old school. We're actually going to make a table for these polynomial functions today. And when we make a table, if you look at my table here, I increase by increments of 5 tenths or a half or 0.5. I start at negative 2.5 and increase my way. Now, you could also start at negative 2 or negative 3 just to see where your points start to fit on your graph and then work your way up by tenths. But negative 3 and negative 2 is always a good place to start for us today. When we go about graphing these or finding our f of x value or finding our y value, you can just go ahead and plug them into your calculator to save some time. And I'm going to write out how to plug them into your calculator or at least how to write them down on your paper. So here we have a negative from our function, and now I'm going to put everything that I plug in for x in parentheses. So it's going to be a negative 2.5, and that is going to be to the fourth, plus, and then again, negative 2.5 to the third, plus three times a negative 2.5 squared, and then plus two times a negative 2.5 again. Now when you plug this all into your calculator, we will get values. We should get a value right around negative 41. The ones that have equal signs, they're really uh, uh, similar to negative 41, or I rounded here. Negative 16, negative 1, and 0 are all exact numbers. And then same with those, you can plug those in. Now these are coordinate points, please remember. So this is an x, y point that we can graph. So if I go ahead and graph all these points, now we get points that look like this. Now what we can do is to connect these dots to our best of our ability in a shape of a graph that looks like a polynomial function. So since this was the end one down here, and I have 2, negative 16, and negative 2 and a half, and negative 41 that keeps going down dramatically, I'm going to start down here and then go about connecting my dots from the bottom up. And then I cruise through these dots, up through there, see if I can get it perfect here. And now notice how my polynomial turns around right here. And now I go back down very sharply, making my polynomial function. And if I look at 3, right, 3 is right here, it goes straight down to negative 21. So this guy would keep going down. So there's my graph, and that's how we're going to graph polynomial functions today. Now getting into some vocab words that we're going to use on the next couple slides. The location principle, if the value of f of x changes signs from one value of an x to the next, then there is a zero between those two x values, something that we have covered before last chapter. Relative minimum is a point on the graph where no other points nearby have a lesser value than the y coordinate. And then relative maximum, a point on the graph where no other nearby points have a greater y coordinate and extrema the maximum or minimum values of the function. Well, we're going to start things off with the location principle as I skip one too far. We are asked to determine the consecutive integer values of x between which real zero of this function. So we have our table here. Go ahead and make your table, and you can start it with negative 2, negative 1, and see where the graph turns around or using the location principle to see where the graph turns around. So how we go about this now is looking at our y values or our f of x values, these guys right here. And now notice I go from negative, negative, which I'm still fine, but now I go from negative to positive. So right here I would change around. So I'm going to say that it's between, so I'm going to spell out between and then x equals, now I go to my x column, x equals what? Negative 1 and what else? 0, so x equals 0. Now I'm looking for where it changes again. Here it's positive, positive, that's fine. Now it goes from positive to negative again. Between what values? x equals 1 and x equals 2. And then as I keep going, now I go from negative back to positive. So again, it's going to be between x equals 2 
and x equals 3. Now, if I showed you what the graph looks like, the graph of this table or of this function would look something like this. Where does our graph cross the x-axis for our solutions or for our zeros? Well, if we look, it crosses the x-axis here because it's going from negative now it turns into positive, right? And where does that happen between? It happens between negative 1 and 0 on the x. Here's negative 1, and here's 0 on the x. Then it happens again right there. What's that between? 1 and 2 on your x, as we keep following it, and it also happens right there, at or between 2 and 3. Again, where it's going negative to positive where it changes signs or it could go from positive to negative. And for our last example, we're going to be asked to estimate the x-coordinate at which the relative maxima and relative minima occur on the graph. So I'm going to start over here where the graph is starting on the left-hand side and I'm going to follow it up. Now it changes directions right here, right at this x-coordinate. We're going to look for x-coordinates and it changes directions right here. So our relative maxima is going to be right at x equals negative 3. Now if I keep following the graph, it keeps going down and changes directions again right here. This is the lowest point on the graph in this general area. So is this going to be a maxima or a minima? Well, it's going to be a minima because it's the lowest point in this area. So it's x equals, and where is my x at? It's right about negative 1. Keep following the graph. Again, it changes directions one more time, right here. And is it going high to low or low to high? It is going from high to low. And so we have a relative maxima again at x equals a positive 1. And then the very last thing that we're going to do is describe the end behavior. So I'm going to start on the left side, and I'm going to say that f of x approaches, what does it approach for my y's? It's approaching negative infinity, right, because it's going down and down forever. So it approaches negative infinity as x, and it's x is going out, right, it's x approaches negative infinity. And then the other side, I'm going down again. So f of x approaches negative infinity as, what is my x doing? x is approaching positive infinity. And that is the end behavior of the polynomial function. And that does it for section 5.4, analyzing graphs of polynomial functions. Good day.